An operation that's used very frequently in a lot of different math classes is something called a square root operation. So in this video, we're going to unpack just what is a square root and how do you find the square root of a number and just a lot of the basics related to square roots. So we'll, we'll start with a definition here. We'll say that a number A equals the square root of a number B if B is equal to A squared. Now I know that definition is a little confusing, so we'll, we'll clarify it. So let's, let's start with a simple example. Let's say we want to figure out what the square root of 9 is. So by this definition, our B value is 9. So we're looking for a magic number so that if we squared that number, it would give us 9 if we squared it. So you think of the ways of factoring 9. You could have 1 times 9. But that doesn't work because 1 and 9 aren't the same value. It's not going to be one of those numbers squared. But you could also factor 9 as 3 times 3. That's perfect because that's 3 squared. So 9 has a nice square root value. The square root of 9 would give you 3. It's very nice and clean. Um, let me, let's try another one. 49 has a nice square root value. The square root of 49 means you're looking for some number that if you multiplied it to itself, it would give you 49. I think that would be 7 times 7, right? So the square root of 49 would be 7. Works great. Now, not all numbers have very nice, pretty square roots. For example, if you take the square root of 10 instead of the square root of 9, you, you would have to find a number that if you squared it, which means multiplied it to itself, it would give you 10. Well, the factors of 10 are 1 times 10 and 2 times 5, and that's about it. Right? There's not a, a nice number so that if you squared it, it would give you 10. Now, you can actually do square roots on your calculator. You'll usually find them on the left-hand side of most TI or standard uh, graphing calculators like the 84 or the 83. And so if you take the square root of 10, I got a number like 3.16227766 and it keeps going on for a long time. So this isn't a nice pretty number, but I'll bet you if you take this number times itself, it would give you 10. And notice this makes sense because it's a little bigger than 3 and the square root of 9 was 3, so the square root of 10 probably is a, is a little bigger than 3. But it's also not as big as 4 because 4 squared would give you 16, which is, which is much larger than 10. So, so um, yeah, everything does make sense here. One last thing I'll say before we move on to some examples is notice you can only take the square root of a positive number. Now, why is that? Well, I think b is going to have to be positive because no matter what number you take for a, if you square that, when you square any real number, it's going to be positive because a positive times a positive would be positive, and a negative times itself, a negative, would also be positive. So we'll, you'll, you should never see something like the square root of negative 25 or something like that, at least as far as what, what are called real numbers are concerned. You can take the square root of a negative number if you're referring to what are called complex numbers, which we haven't studied yet. But for the vast majority of cases, will we'll for the most part say you cannot take the square root of a negative number. All right, so um, let's put that aside now and let's look at some common or popular square roots. These are things that you can easily take the square root of. Square root of one is one. Why? Because one times one is one. Square root of four is two because two squared gives you four. The square root of nine, as we've already done, is three. The square root of 16 would be 4, because 4 squared gives you 16. All right, you help me with the second column here. What would the square root of five be, 25 be? That would be 5, because 5 squared is 25. The square root of 36 would be 6. The square root of 49, as we've already done, is 7. The square root of 64 would be 8. The square root of 81 would be 9, again, because 9 squared, or 9 times 9, gives you 81 and the square root of 100 would be 10. 
anything between these values, 1 and 4 and 9 and 16, they have square roots, but the square roots aren't very nice. They're ugly, long decimal values. So these would be a, this would be a good list to, to memorize. I would recommend memorizing this list here. Now the last thing I want to look at with you is just a little bit of vocabulary as it relates to square roots. So um, two quick vocab words. The actual square root symbol, this line that's got the little nook on it, that is called a radical. So when you hear somebody talk about uh, radicals, they're referring to just the square root symbol. And then the thing that comes under the radical is called the radicand. So when you have the square root of 25, the square root symbol is called the radical, and 25 for this particular uh, expression is called the radicand. So we've got a lot to talk about over the next few videos. We're going to unpack um, a lot of different um, properties of the square root uh, operation and how to manipulate expressions that have square roots and a bunch of other things. So hopefully though this served as just a good light introduction to what square roots mean and how you find the square roots of certain numbers.